If you are an aspiring doctor, there are certain things that you should be looking for in your undergraduate university that will make your journey to medical school much smoother. So in this video, we'll go over six major factors to consider, from a college's depth of science classes to the pros and cons of attending a liberal arts college instead of a research university. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick reminder to subscribe to our channel for more videos on college admissions, and also be sure to give this video a thumbs up if it's helpful to you as you navigate your journey to college. First, we want to make an important clarification. When we say pre-med, we mean a student who plans to attend medical school. Contrary to popular belief, pre-med is not a major, it's actually just a track at college. Students who want to become a doctor need to follow a specific set of undergraduate course requirements involving many science classes, of course, but they can technically major in anything. You could be a pre-med and actually major in music or Spanish, for instance. So just wanted to make that clear. Now that we've said that, here are the six factors you should consider when you're applying to college as a pre-med or as someone who wants to eventually go to medical school. They are depth of science classes, strength of pre-med advising, availability of research opportunities, access to hospitals, financial aid generosity, and a liberal arts college versus research university. So let's hop into each one of those six factors in depth, starting with number one, which is the depth of science classes. It's important to pick a school that offers strong science classes. For example, you should select a school whose organic chemistry classes focus on teaching reaction mechanisms rather than spending too much time on nomenclature and more logistical things about chemistry. Science courses that challenge you and deeply explore the material will help you to develop a strong foundation to tackle the MCAT, which is the seven hour long medical school entrance exam. The exam covers psychology, sociology, physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, and biology. The MCAT also covers critical reading, so it's also important to develop strong textual analysis skills in your humanities classes, such as philosophy or literature. Since the MCAT is such a weighty exam and such a crucial part of medical school admissions, you wanna be doubly sure that you're building up the necessary skills and knowledge to ace the MCAT over the course of your college career. The MCAT is definitely not something that you can succeed on by simply self-studying for a few months. You need a really strong foundation in the sciences to achieve a high score. So going to a college that has quality science departments with an emphasis on critical thinking can certainly set you off on the right foot towards medical school. Factor number two is the strength of the college's pre-med advising program. You should look for schools with developed pre-med advising committees. Those committees are usually made up of science professors or health professionals, so they have an insider look at the medical school admissions process. They make sure students are on track to complete all of the medical school prerequisites, and there are many, it can get a little confusing. They can connect students to relevant research or medical opportunities on campus, and they can guide them through the process of actually applying to medical school. Some committees go a step beyond and even offer specific essay and interview help when you're applying. The more support you have from health and science professionals throughout your university, the better you'll be prepared for medical school applications. And so it's kind of a no-brainer that you should look for a school that has strong advising for pre-med. Number three is the availability of research opportunities. Medical schools look favorably on students who have done some science research. That's because the field of medicine is fundamentally research-based, as we'd want it to be, right? Doing research will also equip you with critical thinking skills, provide you with an opportunity to find mentorship and other networking connections, and help you engage with original scientific literature. And that in particular will give you a leg up in your science classes and on the MCAT. Number four is access to hospitals. On top of research, pre-med students should aim to gain some shadowing and patient care experience during undergrad. Hospitals are a great place for all of those types of experiences. Many large schools known for their medical programs have on campus or at least school affiliated teaching hospitals. While those are primarily for the benefit of medical school students on campus, pre-med undergrads usually can find ways to get involved in certain programs or shadow opportunities that provide that really important exposure to patient care that can help you on your applications. Factor number five is financial aid generosity. College is expensive and medical school is even more expensive. Unfortunately, financial aid programs for medical school also tend to be less developed than those for undergraduate schools. 75% of medical school students in the class of 2018 graduated with debt the average amount of debt being almost $200,000. So you wanna make sure you have an honest discussion with your family about whether they'll be contributing to your college or med school tuition and discuss the long-term budget if so. It may be wiser to pick a more affordable school for your undergraduate degree as that will help you to avoid too much debt in the likely scenario that you'll need to take out loans once you get to medical school. Remember, however, that the schools with high sticker prices aren't necessarily unaffordable. That's a really important thing to remember as you approach undergrad. 
more selective schools have the most generous financial aid programs, which often reduces your personal cost of attendance. To get an estimate for your expected family contribution to college, you can use the school's net price calculator, which is usually found on their financial aid website. Schools that promise to meet 100% of a student's demonstrated need tend to have the most generous financial aid. Your financial aid packages will likely still vary among all of the schools though, as each school has slightly different algorithms and some offer loans as part of their package while some don't. Moving on to factor number six, which is liberal arts college versus research university. So now that we've gone over those first five factors, you might be wondering what kind of school you should attend. Is it better to attend a liberal arts college or a research university? Well, first let's define a liberal arts college by what it actually is. It's specifically not a vocational, a professional, or a technical school. A liberal arts school generally provides a broad educational base across many subject disciplines. Liberal arts colleges also tend to be smaller in size. Most have fewer than 5,000 students, and many have enrollment closer to 2,000. The lower enrollment usually equates to smaller class sizes, a stronger sense of community, and ultimately closer relationships with professors. Let's talk specifically about the pros of attending a liberal arts college as a pre-med. Well, strong science classes that won't weed you out. In some research universities, introductory level science classes are designed to weed out struggling students. This is to avoid having too many weaker pre-med applicants. On the flip side, intro science classes at liberal arts colleges aren't usually weeded out. Liberal arts colleges generally want to encourage engagement with STEM fields, and it's a common misconception that liberal arts colleges don't offer STEM classes or that their STEM departments aren't strong. Their introductory science classes are actually designed to support and engage students who might be on the fence about their academic direction. Furthermore, professors at liberal arts colleges generally focus on teaching over research, and so their classes are therefore more in-depth and meaningful, which, as we talked about earlier, will better prepare you for the MCAT if you decide to apply to medical school. Another pro is more faculty interaction. So small classes also mean that you'll have plenty of chances to build relationships with the faculty. It's not uncommon at liberal arts colleges to find a professor who invites students over for dinner or hosts regular coffee hours in their office. You're more likely to build stronger and deeper relationships with your faculty, and those relationships can equate to stronger and deeper letters of recommendation when it comes to time to apply to medical school, which are very important assets. Another pro is strong faculty advising, which is somewhat related to our other pros. So smaller classes also equate to fewer students, which usually means a stronger faculty advising program. That means your advisor will actually get to know you and your goals, and you'll have plenty of opportunities for face-to-face -face meetings with that person. Your advisor will likely be personally invested in your success, and that might mean they would make connections or help to you to get relevant jobs or internship opportunities. Pre-health professions committees also tend to be very active at liberal arts colleges, guiding you through the entire process and even helping with those mock interviews. So now that we've gone through some of the pros, let's talk about the flip side, which are the cons of attending liberal arts college as a pre-med student. Number one is fewer research opportunities. So the research opportunities at a liberal arts school are generally more limited than those at large research universities, and those that do exist are usually reserved for upperclassmen at the college. It might not be until junior or senior year that you can become really involved in research. Furthermore, the research being conducted at liberal arts colleges is generally, not always, but generally not as well funded as at larger schools, so it may feel like you're not making quite as much of an impact with your research. Another con is that there's usually no campus-associated hospital. So as we mentioned, large universities with a med school usually have an on-campus or at least school-affiliated hospital, which allows students to practice patient care, gain research experience, and shadow doctors. Liberal arts students can usually find these opportunities in other cities over the summer or through unaffiliated nearby hospitals during the year, but those existing programs at research universities do provide an easier and more efficient means to getting that hospital experience. Another con is higher cost of attendance. So most liberal arts colleges are private, meaning that they'll usually be significantly more expensive than a public research university, although equally as expensive as a private research university. That said, the more selective liberal arts colleges do tend to have the stronger financial aid programs. So it's possible that your family's actual cost of attendance could be just as low as that of a public university, or in some cases, even lower. So those are the pros and cons. Clearly, there are a lot of different considerations as you apply to college as a pre-med student. The earlier you think about all of these six factors, the more prepared that you'll ultimately be in your college search, and hopefully the smoother your path to medical school. We hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about pre-med admissions, be sure to leave them for us in the video's comments. We also want to invite you to visit our free platform, which is app.collegemind.com, to get guidance on the college applications process, from building a school list to writing essays. Best of luck in your undergraduate admissions.